Okay, before we go any further, I think it's uh, it would be cool to mention something here. Uh, for example, uh, let's say you wanted to make these ends here a bit flatter. A way we can do that is by going to our brush menu. And if you press Control Shift and click your brush here, you can s uh, select Clip Curve. And with Clip Curve, Control Shift and then start dragging. You can see that this is snapped there and you can use the spacebar and you see that um, shadow that you see there, it's going to clip everything that's there in that shadow to the line that we have there. And I, I could do this and use my clip curve and that will give me that kind of um, geometry there. Now one thing why I'm doing this is because I wanted to say that by changing geometry like that, you don't need to recreate UVs. You can use the UVs that you already have. The only time that you need to create, recreate your UVs and wrap your UVs again, if, uh, for example, I come here and I start adding new edges or adding new vertices or removing edges or removing vertices, then when you do that, you'll have to unwrap your mesh again. And let's see what happens if I just copy this. Uh, using that plugin that we used and you can also use the export function here if you don't want to use that plugin and when you come here to substance painter you can do a new one if you press new uh, this menu will pop up and you press select and then you select your fbx and press ok and uh, you can do it that way if you like now i'm just going to do a close here and discard that and i'll paste uh, normal here and now notice that we have really sharp edges there and and we would have baking errors here if we didn't have let's go back into zbrush if we didn't have this type of geometry that we have here we can see that this is quadrants and there's an edge there if there was no edges and these were just four quads here we'd have a baking error there and we would need to use a bevel in fact here we would probably use a bevel here as well and let me just check do i have symmetry on i don't so i'll press x to turn on symmetry please zbrush work with me press x Okay, now I have symmetry on, so I'll, I'll work on this one and the other one at the same time. And so something that I can do here is go into Z, my Z Modeler brush, and I already am on my Z Modeler brush. If I press space on, a, on one of these edges, I can select um, slide, which is right there. Now I have this on my Pi menus. So if you go into my Pi menus, you'll see how I, add the, I have something like this selected. So if I go here, I can just go in slides and I'll grab one of these edges and I'll press spacebar and just do edge loop complete. If I bring this down, this is going to be like a bevel. Now, if I copy this and go back into my Substance Painter, I'll press Control F4 just to discard that and I'll paste here. Now we don't have such a sharp edge right there because we have a bit of beveling there okay and remember we're just gonna we're gonna look at this from about this distance so i won't be too bothered uh with this model so just wanted to say that about uvs you don't need to recreate uh, run wrap your uvs again if we're just changing doing minor changes in your model okay so let's create um the base the legs the four wheel legs that we were talking about. Now I'm just going to do a quick save here. That's just going to do a quick save on my project there. And I, I don't need these Z spheres anymore. So I'm going to delete these Z spheres. I'll leave my older there and I'll hide it. And I'm going to start fresh uh, by doing, let's go back to pure ref and see what we got here. We're going to create this uh, in this video. So let's start doing that. Okay. So first things first, let's plan how we're going to do this. So we can start, we can see that the, apart from the wheels, of course, this is the most complex piece of geometry we have here. And it's not complex at all, but, um, we can see that that is going to be the most complex one. Now for these legs here, we can just do one leg and then we'll duplicate it across the others, uh, all the other legs. We can see that we will need uh, some beveling here, so it's not too sharp of an edge there. 
And at the end here, we can use a different polygroup uh, and then um, use ID maps uh, so that it's going to be easier to texture this last bit because this last bit is plastic, as you can see, and this is metal. So let's do one of these legs. Let's start with that. Okay, so I paused the video and I was thinking of this in a different way. This is a... There's five faces to this piece here. And I'm first going to focus on this... Uh, this more hard surface piece and not so much on... Well, it's a hard surface as well, but not so much on the round piece. I'll do the round piece separately. And I'm thinking I'm just going to do this uh, pentagonal uh, shape first. And I'm going to extrude, inset and extrude all these pieces from it. So let's just focus on that piece then. So for that, I'm just going to come here to insert and I'll, I'll just insert the cube 3D for now. And I'll come down here and uh, where is initialize? Initialize. I come down to initialize and I really don't need the cube like that. And it's a uh, terrible geometry here in the top. So I'm going to come here and I believe I can use one of these three guys. And right now, I think I can use one of these three guys. Can I? Uh, if I bring these down to one, what? No, I cannot. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to use... I'm actually going to use these guys for something else later on. But uh, for this purpose, I will... Let me just delete that. I'm not going to use that. I will grab a cylinder 3D, I think. Yes, a cylinder 3D. And I'm going to come down to initialize. And I'm going to mess up with the divides. So for um, V divide, I'll use four right there. And now I am on a pentagonal shape. So I'm going to probably need five. Yes, and five, just like our reference. We have something like that for five. And I'll just change the Z size here a little bit. And I think it's something like that. Because you want to kind of like a squared up face there. Okay. So from this shape, now we have this shape, we can come here and press make polymesh 3D, make this a polymesh 3D, go back to our older here. And before I move on, I'm going to insert a cube. And this button here you can find in macros. If you go to mark macros, you can find here insert cube. And the reason why I'm inserting a cube, and I'm not going to make it visible, is so that if I want to save my tool, and I usually use save tool, I'm using quick save because it is a tutorial, but I usually use save tool. And this first being when you use save tool, save as, it, the, the name of your sub tool, whatever name you give it, when you're saving it, it's going to be the name of your first sub tool up here. So I'm going to rename this and I'm going to call it our IV pole. Okay, so that's not going to be visible. It's just there for, for the purpose of the name. If I want to save the tool later on, which I will do. Now I can uh, simply insert while the cylinder that I just created. And I believe it's this one. Yes. Okay, let's work on this. And uh, if I press space and go to move, and I also have this in my Pi menus, but I can press space and go to move and place it right there. Uh, I think it's it's on the top. Let me see the reference here. Yeah, it's going to be on the top so we can have space for the legs, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'll just uh, get out of the way, please. Uh -huh. I'm just going to place it on the floor. Now, we can use Z Modeler, and if I just go into my draw mode here, we can use Z Modeler inset. And if you over a face and you press space, you're gonna go into inset right there. And actually, before I use that, I'm gonna use um, group uh, groups by normals. And I, I'll, I'll show you where this is. If you go into polygroups, you got groups by normals. And if you change your angle, change your angle, you can get different results. Okay, I'm not being able to do what I want. I want... Okay, now I got it. So I got uh, three polygroups, top, bottom, and this, all these faces have one polygroup. So if I now press space on top of uh, one of these faces using inset, and I say polygroup all here, and I say inset region. I believe this is gonna, no, not region actually, each poly. 
I can insert like that. Okay. And now if I go into my normal Z modeler, and basically I got QMesh on these guys, and I go polygroup old, I can now do some, some magic here and do that. From the reference, I think this is more or less what we're aiming at. Okay, so if I if I grab one of these guys, it's gonna QMesh again, but if I press con Alt, uh, no, okay, Shift, I can move instead of Q meshing again. Okay, so now I have that, and that is what we have in our reference. Now I am gonna use Q mesh again to do that last bit that it's plastic, as you can see in the reference, that bit that is plastic right there. And then I'll use um, Pauling paint and to make sure that that's a different bit right there. So that was pretty easy. We got that going for us. Now we got to do the wheels and we got to do the cylindrical, uh, cylindrical shape right here, which is that cylindrical shape on top. And this shape is going to open up a discussion about um, smoothing groups. So to create this shape, we can easily create this shape in the same way that we created the other shape right there in the center. And for that, we can come up here and I'll click cylinder here. And after the work is already done, as you can see, if I go here into initialize and I use my inner radius, right? The shape is practically done right now. So I'll just bring down the H divide. I don't need that all that div division right there and my X and my Z size actually. And now we have the shape that we want it. Now, what is enough geometry? Let's get into that discussion. If I do this with just uh, six, like I had before, uh, and so six faces, one, two, three, four, five, six, this is never gonna work and um, because even with smoothing groups and I'll, I'm, I'm going to show you what, what's going to happen if I make polymesh 3D here and I'll use this to copy to external go into our substance painter and I'll just press Control F here to discard this and paste okay so smoothing groups has been exported which means that if i go around this you don't really see the edges because it's got smoothing groups and another thing about smoothing groups if these would be if i made this art edge these two vertices would count as four vertices in your game engine when you smooth an edge then it will count only as two unless and I know it can get confusing, unless you had a UV cut here. If you had a UV cut here, then it would count as four vertex. Okay, so it's important to use smoothing groups whenever you can. Now let's look at this. If I, if I change my lighting, you can see that, yeah, it's smooth, kind of. But as I turn my model around, you can see that something is wrong there and there's a really sharp edge right there. I want this to be really smooth in any angle. Now, another thing that we can see here is these baking errors, right? Oh my gosh, changing applications all the time. You, you kind of forget how to navigate in different applications. All right, these, these errors, uh, I said baking errors, that's a mistake, it's just normals. These normals have some, uh, some kind of a problem here, right? Uh, and what's happening is that this is trying to smooth both these edges. A way you can fix that, if we go back into ZBrush, is by beveling these edges. So I can go into my Z modeler and I can choose, actually bevel is right there, I can choose bevel and so bevel basically go to edge loop complete and bevel that edge right and bevel that edge and I'm just gonna worry about this top one I'm not gonna worry about the bottom one and uh, notice that I just used copy I didn't unwrap it because when you use these prim primary uh, shapes in ZBrush they already have uh, UVs on them 
I'm gonna quick save this because it's sometimes when I unwrap this stuff, it gives me a crash. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. I'll just use polygrips and I'll just unwrap this. Okay, so now because I added new edges, I need to unwrap. So I'll copy, I'll come back into uh, Substance, can press Control F4 just to discard that and I'll paste it. Okay, and now you notice that we no longer have those those normal errors right here because we added a bevel. We still have them down here because there's no bevel there. Okay, so bevels are very important. If I wanted this kind of shape, this is how I would create it. And uh, well, I would add bevels here as well because you can see that this is really sharp right there. So I would also add some bevels on the side there, something like that. Okay. Now, this is not really what we want. We want something that is smooth all around. So I'm just going to delete this shape and I'll go back to this. It's still here. I can still go to initialize and change it. So eight, if we go to eight, for example, eight all around. So eight will give me a bit of a different result. And I want to show you what kind of result that's going to give me. And I'm going to come here and do that. And you know, we already seen it. We need to bevel this. There's another way you can bevel this, a really cool way. If you go to geometry and you come down uh, to, well, you could use crease poly groups here, or you can, I could just crease all. And if I go to my bevel slider here and I start moving my bevel slider, everything is beveled now. Okay, let's try and uh, unwrap this. Okay, and send this into Substance Painter. And I think we got a, some kind of problem right there. It kept on wrapping for all eternity. Uh, let me just do a quick save here before this goes crazy. And I'll try to unwrap that again. Okay, now we don't wrap without the poly groups. Okay, so if I now copy this, copy and go back into Substance Painter. Control F4, discard this and paste. Okay, so oh yes, of course. What I'm, what am I doing? I don't want to bevel uh, all around because um, it's gonna give me that result that you just seen. So I'm gonna go and undo that. Just wanted to show you that bevel really. And if I just bevel these bit and that bit okay and let's see what we have because the bottom is not beveled so let's unwrap that copy go back in substance painter and paste it here okay so now the result we have is is this right because i beveled the the side so that we don't have that normal problem here and notice that when i change the lighting here everything here is smooth right and on the outside everything is smooth as well i mean you can kind of see an edge right there but what what i'm trying to show you is that remember we're going to see this from this distance so if for the pole we can actually use eight uh subdivisions on the um, on the outside because you'll not be able to notice that on the pole, but on this object, you kind of see the edges there, right? So we we will need a bit more, maybe 12 or 16. So we're going to go with that. Let's go back to this. And we know that this is going to work on the pole. Uh, let me see. Let me see the reference. Go back to the reference here and the reference for the pole here. Uh, so the pole starts will start in there so you won't see the end of the pole and the problem is when you see the end you'll see those edges there and you won't see the, the well you might see the top of the pole but we can do a separate uh, piece with more geometry for this and actually we can do the same this piece is going to be practically the same thing as these piece so we can do one piece for uh, both and that's going to be an opportunity to show you where you can use the same movies uh, for one piece 
and that's exactly what we're going to do okay so we don't need this anymore I'm gonna delete it let me just I the geometry there and uh, okay let's go back to what we were creating here and now we know 8 is not gonna be enough so I believe 12 is going to be more than enough for this case. Uh, again, if this would be a massive structure, you probably need 32 or 24 or something like that. And one thing that I haven't uh, talked about is I'm using uh, even numbers, even numbers all the time because I want to have quads in my... Um, well, because this is open, it's always going to be quads, uh, even if it's an uneven number. But for UV unwrapping, when you use even numbers, it's going to be easier to unwrap this if you're doing a manual unwrap when you're creating your own um, your own seams. And seams are just cuts in when you're unwrapping. So when you're creating your own seams, unwrapping. Okay, let's make this in poly mesh 3D. We got a poly mesh 3D right here and let's go back to our original uh, design and i'll just insert this new mesh uh, i believe this is the one yep this is the one so let's go into move mode bring this up here and i'll just use shift here alt click to move this around and make this a bit smaller okay even smaller so you get it like the reference now this is a game model so one thing i can do right away is get rid of faces that i'm not going to use so if i just go into solo mode i'm going to get rid of these faces and if i press shift p just to get rid of that floor for now I can come here and choose delete, which is just if you press spacebar, click, click delete, and I can choose poly loop, and that's going to use delete all that poly loop right there. I don't need those faces, so I'm going to get rid of them. Okay, um, now uh, I am going to reuse this up here. I'm going to reuse it there. So actually, no, I am not going to get rid of those faces uh talking about reusing it am i really reusing it uh because this is a bit flat there and then it's smaller over there so no i'm not going to reuse it so yeah i'm gonna keep those faces um deleted all right so we know we need the beveling so let's go into bevel and I'll bevel this. And now if I, I, I did that bevel there, if I just click this one, it's going to get the, the same size as the previous bevel. So I'm going to have that kind of beveling there. And now I can unwrap this. And I'll just do a quick save because unwrapping sometimes messes things up. I'm going to unwrap this. And I'm just going to look at flatten and see what I got. Okay, I got that. That's fine. Uh, and let's look at it, uh, what happens in um, Substance Painter, how are we going to see this in Substance Painter. So if I'll export it, come into Control F4, discard that and paste. Okay, so this is the result I have, and remember we're going to be looking at it from further away than this distance actually, but this distance is already practically unnoticeable. I'll just pop in an aluminium there because it's going to be looking something like that and that is that is fine from the distance that we're going to be looking at it okay so if you want to make a giant uv pole i would probably use more geometry but i'm not so this is fine so if i now just come out of solo mode now i got this going and it's just like the reference now let's do the the poll from here up there and I'm just going to do another video because this video is getting way too long. So I'll see you in the next video.